Y'all really know what it is, your boy, Yako. What it do? Episode 21 to the Outlet to Reality, the hardest podcast in Vegas and Chicago. What up? This is the place where you want to leave your drama, hide your own reality. You just got to be here. And the best part, we're going to have a good time. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! Thank you, fans, for listening. Today, we have a special guest. She's been my friend since high school, has her own YouTube channel called Jazz to Be Inspired. Um, Jasmine Malari, what's up, girl? Hi. <laughs> I'm doing we had to bring back Diana Simone. I missed her so much. I was like, girl, you got to come back because now we got two very powerful women not only that, they are really good at motivational speaking and everything. So, you know, I, I had to bring my girl back. How you doing, Diana? <laughs> What's up? Cool, cool, cool. But real quick, before we get started, I'm going to share a little story. What happened? Back in what college, I took a class called Voice and Diction with this professor. He almost looks like a penguin from Batman, you know, real wobbly and all that. We used to call him Mr. Mace. But anyways, it was a class where, you know, we got to express ourselves, do presentations. And he was an actor on the side. So he did all the commercials for Captain Crunch, like all that goody stuff. And he likes to feed off people's energy. So I am a star of that too in class. So we used to bump heads because I would steal all the classmates towards me instead of him. So one day- It was like a competition. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So one time we had like this real, like this one assignment, basically you had to pretend you were in a radio station and you read this script and it was really like scripted, right? So. The first guy goes up and this is like eight in the morning class. So everybody's tired, they're bored. The guy goes up and he goes, <laughs> 92.3 FM, the best show ever. And I was like, jump, that's so boring. The other guy, my homie, he hasn't had breakfast, I could tell. My boy, he goes in the paper and goes, whoa, like, damn, that's how, that's how he started. Like he wanted to eat the paper. Like he was just, he was hungry. But when I went, <laughs> it was my turn, right? I was like, man, I'm gonna put some sabor, some sauce, you know, into it. You know, put some spice. So the first thing I did when I saw the script, I kind of improvised it. I was like, blah, y'all really know what it is, 92.3 FM. <laughs> this is the best show ever. And I'm about to introduce you to a movie, the best comedy, romance, and S-E-X. And everybody was laughing. They were cheering me. I felt the energy, right? <laughs> but you're not going to believe what happened. My professor. No. He basically said, guys, stop. Everybody passed except for David. That's what he said. <laughs> My heart broke because I felt embarrassed at this point. Because I'm like, I put my heart into it. Hey. I did it for my squad. So you know what happened? My, you know, the students among me, right? They backed me up. They said, look, Mace, I think you're being a little hard on David. Just mm -hmm. give me another chance. So Mace felt bad. I think he felt all outnumbered because it was the whole class saying that. Right. Mm -hmm. He was serious? Like, he really didn't want you to pass? Like he, he thought I did a terrible job. He said, David, you did not go through the script I wanted. Mm. I wanted from, like, this certain... How I wanted it. Right, right. Like, robotic. But right. that's me. I had to make it authentic. Yes. Right? And you know, today's about being real, right? I was going to say, right? <laughs> right? You feel me? So thanks to this experience that I had, it actually made me appreciate more of who I am. Yes, yeah. And next you know, look at me. Now I got the podcast. Yeah. You no, know, that's how it is. It always be like that. But when people tell you like, ooh, you're doing too much, or like, ooh, don't do that. Like, it's too extra or whatever. That's exactly most of the time what 
is what makes you unique and what makes you different and what people actually are drawn towards. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're being that way, spontaneous, like going off the script, adding your own touch to it. Right. Like, yeah, I love that shit. And everybody's different. Everybody. Everyone's going to read that script differently. Exactly. Some are going to come with that mood. Some are going to be like chill, like whatever your certain style is, you bring to it that. Yeah. So, so he being a hater. I know. It's a sad story. <laughs> <laughs> but He's a hater. Real quick. So Jasmine, now that you're here, I'm very curious because I saw when you first uploaded your first video of you coming out. Yeah. There's so many views. Like, I remember when I first saw it, it had, like, over 400 views on, like, a certain, I don't know if it was which social media, but then on YouTube, it's, like, 200-something views in one day. And I was shocked because none of my videos, um, be honest with you, have <laughs> that fast like that. It takes a while. So what, for you, how was it, like, coming out, like, were your parents very accepting about it or was it like nervous or, you know, tell, tell us what, what, what went through your head and everything. Well, um, I basically just went at it. Like, <laughs> like I didn't really know what I was going to go through at that point. I just had to tell them because it was something of me that I could not hold any longer. So I just knew I had to tell them or, you know, like I wouldn't be my authentic self. So I told them and it didn't, I told one of my parents and it didn't go so well, but you know, you really learn, you really learn from your experiences of the bad and you take that with you and it pretty much makes you become a stronger person. Mm. So it wasn't wonderful. It wasn't butterflies. It was um, it was really sad uh, because I grew up in a very conservative family, and you know, a man and woman should be together. But you know, I always knew that I was different at ten years old, and like I just knew that that was just a part of me and that it didn't define me so yeah like it wasn't all like wonderful um i got like being like i had words that things that shouldn't be, be told and like um just really hurtful things but in time it definitely got way better so yeah so now it's more yeah. like what happened your relationship now with your parents is it more like it's getting better oh yeah we're actually very close <laughs> like they I love it always happens what happened that happens a lot i feel like even like with mm -hmm. uh girls that get like pregnant young like the parents first are like what like no no and then they're like like they lean toward you know because mm -hmm. obviously they still love you yeah mm -hmm. and um i think that's what came into their heads like, if my daughter is happy, right. I'm going to accept it, and I have to deal with it, right. and I'm going to just right be for her. And that's what kind of happened. <laughs> that's pretty much happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I, I feel like sometimes in life, we question, you know, or sometimes we hide ourselves from others yeah. because we're afraid we're going to get judged. We get afraid that people don't understand there's a lot of things going through our head but i feel like if you're true to yourself who cares what everybody says yeah mm -hmm. at the end of the day you got to be happy you feel me yeah. and it's hard like that's it's easier said than done you know mm -hmm. to be that man that shit it's hard to be truly you but like i feel like now that's what i'm kind of doing or yeah that's what i'm doing more of I want to live more authentically. Like every day I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be me as much as I can. You know what I'm saying? And if people like it, they look cool. If they don't, cool. Like regardless, if I'm happy and I'm not doing anything malicious and I'm not hurting nobody, you know, and I, everything I'm doing is in love, then that's it.
Yeah, right. like you really shouldn't care if what? you're living. Why yeah. do we care? Why yeah. don't you? We? Uh huh. Uh huh. You know? Because we do. Air. We can't. People will be out here like I don't give a fuck what nobody says, but we do. Like you do. <laughs> okay, we kind of do. We want them to like us. We want to be accepted. You know. But it's like, yeah. damn, sometimes I'm like, why the fuck do I care? I don't give a fuck. Like, bitch, you know who you are. Like, you know, I got people that love me. Like, why am I tripping on people that don't matter? But yeah. it's hard. Yeah. This this is book I've been reading. Um, I told Diana like a while back. It's called The Four Agreements. And one of them is talking about to not take things personal. Yeah. So even to the point when someone says to you, wow, you're very beautiful. Don't right. take it because... Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you should know that you're beautiful and you should you should love yourself, right? Yeah. So that way, when someone does hurt you or call you names or say you're stupid or something, you'll be like, okay, because you're sure. You're, right. You. Because if you take it personal, right? If someone says something negative about you and you give it back, you basically made them happy. Because there's a saying, misery likes company. So their mm-hmm. goal is to bring you down. But if they can get you to go down, you Fuck must. That shit. I don't like that shit. Right? No, bro. <laughs> I'm just being real. Even um, with, like, now I'm doing waitressing and bartending. Like, that shit, there'll be people that are so mean. And I want to snap back and, like, be mean back. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I don't want to sink to that level. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because you're miserable and unhappy, that don't mean that. I got it. Like, you know, I'm gonna let you just have your moment and I'm a, I'm not going to let you affect me. Yeah. Yep. My energy, my peace. Yeah. And I definitely got that from David. Like really? he definitely told me, don't think, don't take things personal. And yeah. you don't know how much peace you get from that. Right. So bless that thing. <laughs> And it's hard. Like, it's a thing to work on. It's not like you one day you're going to be like, okay, I'm not going to take it personal. <laughs> We're human, bro. Like, we feel yeah. shit. Like, that hurt my feet. Like, we hurt. But, yeah, to work on it and not and try to not let it affect you as much. Yeah. Like, I try. I do, Love yourself. More. Right. Like, I do this little thing in the, in the bathroom when I wake up. And for a lot of people, they can't do it. But it's like a psych- psychological exercise. Where you look at yourself and you say to yourself, man, I look good today. Mm-hmm. I love myself. I look good, you know? Yeah. I know down deep inside, like in reality, I don't look like Calvin Klein 6'3 with a big old, you know. You beard. know what? If you believe you look like that, you look like that. Mm-hmm. I look better. Yeah. But to somebody <laughs> you look like that. To somebody <laughs> you look like that. But I, I, I look like, man, I look good. I, I can't believe it. You know, I'm looking fresh, got the goatee. Okay. Got the, you know, I got to feel good. You feel me? And the universe, bam. It just, it's just just unbelievable. Like today, this is crazy. I don't know why I'm saying this, but this is crazy. So today, funny story. I was helping somebody out and it it was a young woman. She was like probably 28. I think she's 28. And I was just being myself, you know, being normal, just talking, right? I wasn't trying to do anything. And she says, uh, so what days you work here? I said, oh, I, was, I, said, uh, I was like, I work like Sunday through Thursday, right? That's it, right? And then she was like, you have any kids? Like she, she literally was interviewing me. Like after we had like a good conversation, she started to interview me. And I was like, I don't like that shit. I don't like when people ask me a lot of questions. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I was yeah, like, too many questions, bro. It was a lot of questions, but I think she was trying to see, like, like if, do you got any kids? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, David was a good candidate. And I was like, no, nah, I don't have any kids. You know, I'm just, you know, trying to do me and focus on my life, this and that. And she was like, oh, I got two kids, you know, this and that. And I was like, Okay, cool, cool. And I kept it real chill. Like, I wasn't trying to flirt, like, hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? I was just real chill, right, doing my thing. And then um, it's funny because she had the chance to leave. Like, this is her chance to go. 
but she still stayed with me for like another 15 minutes. I'm like, damn, this girl don't want to leave. Like, I have nothing to say because I already said what I had to say, right? And I could tell she was just engaging with the conversation. She was just keep going. Hmm. And I'm like, okay, I think she's interested because usually I get people and they're like, hey, okay, thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye. But this girl actually stayed. So I was like, okay, all right, I'm taking notes, all right. And so I told her, hey, do you have Snapchat? And she goes, no, I don't use social media. I said, okay, cool. So I know I could have told her, you know, I, um, I could get your, your number, you know, something like that, you know, if you don't use social media. But then I was thinking, she got two kids. Now I'm doing my observation. She got two kids. I ain't trying to be a stepdad. Damn, you wouldn't date someone with kids then? I'll tell you why. This is my thing. If, so I, I know I'm going to be the dopest dad. But the thing is, I want to have a new family. Hmm. I don't want to be in somewhere where there's already that foundation. You feel me? Because here's the thing you always got to look out. There's stories I heard where like the guy gets attached to the kids and he's they break up. up. Break up. Yeah. And I the say that was my dad. He left me. And yeah. I feel bad that I broke that kid's heart. And I was like, yo, you're not really my kid, but you became my kid. Right, 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 right. In my way. So that's <laughs> how I see it. I have to look out because I could destroy a family. I don't want yeah. to. I respect that. I feel like that's, a, I mean, you know, that makes sense. But, but what about you guys? You guys would date somebody who has kids? No, I would definitely not. Yeah, she said no. <laughs> she was. <laughs> She has to quit. <laughs> why? What is it? Okay, why? Because I just like it's a lot to put on yourself. Like yeah. you have to get to know the kid. You have to see what their dislikes and likes are. You have to know their mannerisms. Like it's an extra step right. for you. Meanwhile, you can start with like what David said. Have your own family, raise the kid your way, yeah. know the kid already. Like, you don't got to do that extra work. Right. That's and that you don't know if y'all will, like, like, I've been a babysitter for a long time. And, like, oh, it's a lot to take care of somebody else's kid because you're not going to discipline them the way you really would discipline your kid. Like, you have to even act the type of way. They're not your kid. So it is very, like, it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah, that's tricky. Hard. But I feel like Diana, you were gonna say kinda like you would try. You know, no, I uh it's not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> like I'm not out here like who got the kids? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm the one. <laughs> you know, like definitely not. But I don't wanna say never. Because I don't know what could happen. Maybe I'll fall in love with somebody and he got a kid. And hopefully it's a baby. So then it's like, okay, I can raise it kind of like my kid. But I don't know. That's tricky. Because then you got to deal with like the, the you know, the father or the mother of the child. And then that could be an issue. Like, what if y'all don't get along? Yeah. And like you said, Jasmine, like it's literally just an extra step. Like it's more things added on to already a relationship that's, hard you know relationships are hard to kind of like maintain already now we got to add that to it it's like so yeah i don't know <laughs> so i'm like yeah i'm not gonna say like never but <laughs> hey hey kid fingers it doesn't happen <laughs> uh, hey guys uh i think we should do a little toast uh cheers because you know we uh we're here together I'm, I'm really yeah. oh! Oh, is that a wine glass, Jasmine? That's so cute. Right. I love it. Got a little cup, chair. Got a glass red cup. Like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got ready. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I'm sorry, girl. I had to take a sip. I got thirsty at that moment. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. That's really cool. I'm glad you guys got to meet at my little get together. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Like, like, how did you guys? You know, we're able to talk a little bit when you guys at my little 
Yeah, we ended up talking about her channel and like how, you know, why you started it and how courageous it is to be that voice, you know, for the people that are dealing with the same things that you had to deal with. Like, it's dope. Thank you. Yeah. Were you nervous to start out like when you first were like going to post this video or put it out there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> like, I'm in my car and i just i just do it to be honest i do it on my breaks wow. and like i just go in and just go at it and yeah i'm definitely nervous but i do it for the people that feel alone mm -hmm. who needs a friend who needs guidance support and like who needs someone to be there for them for whatever problem they're going through especially being in the closet or coming out of the closet or what to expect like going out of the closet and what to do before you get out of the closet so just like i want to be their guidance and their support and not to make this the mistakes that say i kind of did but like to make a smarter path what mistake would you say that you made maybe um, like advice that you would give to someone else not to do or um basically i would wait till like come out okay um i would definitely wait till you're like more like in my what to do before you come out to be financially um stable definitely have that in your place and definitely um at that time, I wasn't financially stable. I was not confident about who I was. Right. Um, I wasn't. Um, when you came out, you're saying. Pardon me. When you came out, you weren't any of those. No. Hello. This is me. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so yeah. Please keep me here because a bitch, I can't go out there. I got. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, those are my mistakes. Be confident about who you are. Yeah. Be financially stable. Love who you are. And, like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the one thing I wish that's I That's important because I wouldn't even think that. Like, finance, like, get, make sure you have a plan, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you have a plan, yeah. Family, I've learned, like, they cannot be, yes, they're blood, but they won't treat you like blood once you come out. <laughs> yeah. when, of, they, when you do something that they think is out of the box, it's like, wait. Yeah. Uh-huh. And like some family members will love you for who you are and some will not and some will never accept you. So you got to have your own back. Yeah. And that's the one thing I give to all my like young LGBT or older LGBTQ people like yeah. own yourself and protect yourself yeah you know? I love that I was yeah. gonna <laughs> I love like that. people won't have your back other than you yeah so you gotta get it together on your own and you will find people who love you for who you are and they don't gotta be family. They can be friends, coworkers, colleagues, whatever, you yeah. know. Sure. Yeah, that's my little advice. <laughs> I always say too, like with that quote, uh, that blood is thicker than water, I'm actually against that. I feel like God put us in this family, right? But at the end of the day, we can pick and choose who is family to us. Mm -hmm. Feel me? Like, I could consider you two my family. Like, if something goes wrong, I got your back. I'm not going to think twice, like, uh, let me think. Nah, I'm going to be like, hey, where you at? I got you. Yeah. Because we build that bond so I feel, like, comfortable. I feel like, okay, you good. And I a lot of times friends and stuff know you more than your family does. You know what I'm saying? Like, your family don't really, like... I mean, I'm sure some families, you, you know, people are more open, but like, there's a lot of times where you're not 100% you with your family. Yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. Like, there's, um, like, with me, right? I only can speak for me, right? So, like, I, I didn't grow up with a father. So, the people that were in my life, like, the, the men 
that I looked up to that weren't blood, they were my father. Like, I remember one time, this is, I don't know why it just came in my head, but one time my dad, I told my dad, I want to go see my family in Mexico, right? I was 18. And I haven't talked to my dad for like maybe six years. But I told my dad, I called him up. He answered. I was like, hey, dad, look, I'm going to go to Mexico. Your aunt bought me a ticket to go. And I want to kind of learn where you came from. I want to discover and find out for myself. And my dad is like, I'm not really for you going to Mexico. And he was like, it's dangerous. And then he's like, if, if you were to die, just know that I did my best. But understand when he said that, he was never in my life. So I was like, this doesn't make sense. So I was hurt what he said. But then when I called my professor really close to me, I said, like, hey, professor, I told him this, exactly the same thing to my dad. You know what he said? He said, look, David, I've been to Puebla, like where you're going to, like eight times. If anything happens to you out there, I know people and I'll fly out and I'll be there with you. That's what he said. He's like, I'll fly out and I'll be there for you. And if you need money, I'll send you some money. Like, I got you. And it's crazy because I kind of wanted to hear that from my father and I heard it from somebody else. So it filled that void that I didn't get with my father. And it's just crazy. But that's what I'm saying. Like, even though my dad is my blood, yeah, it doesn't like, it's sad to say this. And I don't know what you guys are going to think from after this. Mm -hmm. But if my dad were to die, I'm not going to cry. And it's like that song Tupac said, he passed away and I didn't cry because yeah. my anger wouldn't when let me feel for a stranger. That's, that's no, how- No, I'm wrong and I'm heartless, but all along I was looking for a father. He was gone. <laughs> I walked around with the thugs. And even though they sold drugs, they show a young brother love. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Here's the Tupac. Good no, job, no, Tupac. No. I like that. That was a little karaoke right there. <laughs> Shout out Tupac. R.I.P. All right, no. Oh man, but see, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, wow, that's that's know. real. Yeah. And you know what? Too like, it's hard. Like for my own experiences of like people that have hurt me or family members that have hurt me, it's hard to forgive them. You know what I'm saying? When you've been hurt and, and, and traumatized or whatever from what they've you know done, it's hard to forgive them. But like, man, I just try to show them love. Like, you know what? Like God look after, like they didn't know. Sometimes they just don't know any better. Yeah. yeah. You know, like they don't know any better and we just got to pray for them. And, and, and thank God that you have that awareness. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, okay, he wasn't there, but I'm not going to let that hold me back or like, diminish anything I do like and I'm not and I'm not going to be bitter towards it if anything I'm going to learn from it and be better from it you yeah. know that's how that's how I see it too like I just I don't know if I told you guys this but like I don't even I don't know if I told Jasmine either but like <laughs> when the pandemic happened mm. I went to see my dad and this is crazy I haven't seen him for over 15 years wow and I saw him, and it's crazy. He looks just like me. That's the crazy part. When I see him, I feel like I'm looking at my twin because we look the same. He just looks like uh, I think he's just like a little taller than me. Mm -hmm. So I saw him, and I was like, you know what? I feel like I gotta see my dad because this pandemic. I don't know if he's dead. Like I want to know if he's okay. As a son, right? Even though he never looked out for me, I'm like yo, let me go see my dad. And I mm -hmm. saw my dad. And he gave me a hug, right? I didn't really feel the hug. It was like kind of like tap, tap. Uh, yeah, right, right. I feel it. I was like, okay, well, all right, all right. He, at least he tried, right? We're sitting down. This is crazy. And I don't know why I'm getting personal. I, maybe it's the liquor. But uh, <laughs> when, when I was talking, I had, <laughs> I had a lot of questions in my head. And my questions was like, Dad, um, do you know when was the last time we saw a movie together. And he goes, no, nah, I don't remember. And I said, I'll tell you when was our last movie. And it was um, The Seat of Chucky back in 2006. 
And you said to me when we went to see this movie that this is going to be the last movie we're going to watch together. You said that? Literally said that. And he kept his word. I never saw him again. What? I, I, yeah, that's what? What is that? yeah, he's like, David, this is the last movie. And you know, it's crazy because when we saw that movie, even though that movie was one of the worst Chucky films I ever saw. But here's the thing I told my dad. That movie made me a fanatic when it comes down to horror films. Like, I'm a big collector now. But the reason why is because it reminds me of the good times I had with you. That's why I hold on to it. Yeah. So my dad, he starts crying. Like, I saw tears coming down. At this point, this is his chance to be like, hey, man, I messed up, right? Mm -hmm. But when my dad told me this was, like, one of his last words, he's like, look, man, uh, I feel like everything I did was right. <laughs> That's what he said. Everything I did was right. And I said, Dad, you know, it's, it's crazy because you had every moment to reach out to me. I tried calling you for your birthday, you know, trying to spend time with you, always went to voicemail. And I told him something, this is crazy. I'm sharing y'all, even my fans, this is very personal. But I told my dad that I used to struggle something with God where it says you have to honor your parents so you can live a long life. Yeah. And I used to get mad at myself because I said, you know, God, I'm trying everything I can yeah. to honor my father, but it's just not working. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not a good person. And I asked my, my rabbi, my spiritual leader, and I asked him that question. I said, am I messing up? Am I doing something wrong? And you know what he said that sharp? me like forever he said your dad chose to start a new life he has like more kids now he's happy by you accepting his decision of not having you in his life you honoring him. Honoring him. but if you keep bothering him and calling him you're not honoring him because you're bothering him he's happy where he's at right not accepting it that. Yeah. And it's like focus on your mom because your mom has never left you and right. she's there. And I love that. That hit like home. And I told my dad that exactly what he told me. And I felt like I needed that. You know what I'm saying? And that was the last time we saw each other. But um, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know why I got personal, but it's just crazy. I, I had to share it. Well, that's how it is, man. Family, you know, just like you, from what we started saying, like blood is thicker than water. Sometimes that's not true. It's, yeah, I <laughs> totally agree with that. Sometimes it's just not how it it's going to be. Yeah, and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like she's shooting a shot. She's like, "Let me get that throw." <laughs> my mom about to come in and be like, "Hey, <laughs> your mom?" You said. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> but yeah, I could totally agree. Sometimes it just, sadly, it's just, family is just not there. Yeah. And yeah. Like said, accepting you yourself. No. You have your own back. Like, that's the most important thing. For real. For real. For real. <laughs> oh, you're, you're right. Because I've been thinking <laughs> that, like, sometimes I feel like I have that trust struggle of not necessarily being myself because I am always myself but a lot of times I'm I don't know like I might be a lot or I'm a little you know I'm a little more or extra or whatever and like I'll, I'll have like my you know my family be like oh hey, like chill that's doing too much or that's you know and I'm like well bitch damn like that's me <laughs> <laughs> like oh man you know, like, you know, so sometimes I find myself dimming down or like, ooh, let me not do that. Like, let me just, and now I feel like I'm just on the path of no, bitch. Like, at this point, I I really am trying not to give a fuck. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to hurt nobody, but if I'm just want to dance and have a good time, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm like, let myself, because I feel like, oh my God, bro, sometimes you're just not, like, I'm not kind to myself. I'm so critical of myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, I can't do that. That is so stressful. Yeah. It, yeah. So stressful. 
Yeah, I think being kind to yourself is really, really, really important. Especially when you're getting to know who you are and what you like and dislike. And like what you said, just being who you are at the spur of the moment. Like, yeah. Yeah, like go with that. Right. And also, like, being single, you have so much time to work on yourself. Because when you're with somebody, it's kind of hard to really... You know what? I feel the opposite. Oh, dang. I, I love it. <laughs> I swear I feel the opposite because I feel like when I've only been in one serious like relationship you know I've never been like a relationship person yeah. but I feel like I've been single for so damn long like bitch I know myself I'm good all that <laughs> when I'm in a relationship is when I actually learned about myself because that's when I noticed all the shit that I had like all the like fucked up beliefs I have about love, like, you know, I just learned so much about myself when I was with somebody. Wow. Yeah. Cause that yeah. shows a lot. Like the way you react to certain things or the way you love somebody. Like I was a very like distant person. Why are you like that? Like it was, that's a problem. You know, I started, that's when I started kind of going into the root of like, why am I this way? You know, why do I do certain things this way? Like, is it because of how I grew up and my parents, their relationship? Like, that all plays a role in who we become, you know, when we get older. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know. Like, for me, I, I had a very different experience, Diana. I One thing I've noticed, like, growing up, and I don't know if you guys can relate, but I, for the relationship from the past, I've been with people that I'm not trying to put like put them down, but like they haven't fully healed from their past relationships. We all haven't. Yes. All damaged. I'm that one. I'm that one. But I'm the one that hasn't been healed. The bitch is trying. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying like I feel like, I don't know if you guys are the same, but for me, I, I don't know why, but I draw into people that are... Broken. <laughs> yes. And I feel like I can help them give... Yes! And I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I, I, can, I can heal you. I can change you. Yeah, up. I got you. I, I got, got you. you. You're broken. I'm broken too. Let's work on yeah. it. Right. Right. And I, I realized from my past relationships, it was not <laughs> the best thing to do. That and don't work. What happened? That don't work. It don't work. And, and I realize. Wait, I have a question then for both of you guys. Yeah. What is your, like, what do you think? Ew, ooh, this is a good question, bitch. Okay. What do you think is your down, like, what is your flaw in a relationship? When you're in a relationship, like, what's your, what's something that you know, like, I mean, I need to work on this. This is something I struggle with. You can go first, David. Sip <laughs> <laughs> on that wine. Get it? Think about it. Well, okay. So as a guy, I can speak for me, right? I don't, you guys are going to take it different. I, I don't know. But for me as a guy, like, sex is a very big thing for me. And I, I, sometimes I need it, but I don't need it once a week. Every or, day. Almost every day. <laughs> I don't know why, but like, I, it's nothing wrong. I like, you There's know. There's nothing wrong with that. I love the girl, whatever, but I just, I get so excited. Like, I, I'll tell you something. It's just so beautiful when you find the right person. So many, is that your downfall? Like, what is, <laughs> like. Why is that bad? That's not a bad thing. Go for like, I'm not lying. This is, I'm not trying to exaggerate, but I was so, like, I wanted it so bad. Like, I used to want it like in the morning, right after work, <laughs> and before dinner. Like, I was so happy about, it. and everything was good. Like, everything's good. But she's like, "Damn, David, the gang, like you." Re I'm like, "Girl, I just can't help it. Like, I'm just." Like, I'm just so happy. And here's the thing. I'm going to tell you a little secret. For guys, when we have sex in the morning, my whole face changed. Like, I have, like, a million-dollar face. 
I went to work one day, right? I was so happy. I, I you know, I, I did it, right? My All my coworkers is like, yo, you look different. Like, you look glowing. glowing. Yeah, like, you look like you won the lottery or something. Man. <laughs> oh, my God. I never told them, but I just felt good. I don't know why. It just gave me that. Extra- but I don't think that's a bad thing because you just need to find someone that has that same sex drive as you because there's girls out there like that. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I realized that, you know, and, and I'm always a cool person. Like, if my girl, even my future girl, if she said, hey, look, I'm not feeling it right now, I respect that. But I'm just saying for me, in my brain, I just that's, can't. That's important to you. And um, it's just a big, big thing. I don't think it's an addiction because it's not. I don't see it. Like <laughs> I love my girl. If you start thinking it is, imagine it might be. <laughs> it might be. Look at Diana. She's like, it might be. But it's I feel like it's not hurting us because here's the thing. I done my research. Thank you. Like, look at my research. They said when you have sex, you lose more calories than running. That's a workout. It's a workout, girl. You got flip. You got to do all this stuff. It's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But that's my thing. And I also, I would say, besides sex, it was uh, cooking. I wasn't at all connected. Girls are so easy, I feel like. I, I, just growing up, you have to understand my, my background. The guy is always looked in the Hispanic culture as a king, the man of the house. So me being the only child in my mom's crib, mm-hmm. I had everything done for me. Like yeah. I had my laundry, my, my food, everything. And that's why I moved out so I can break off of that mm. and not be a, a mama's boy, right? Yeah, right, right. For me. Yeah. Um, but I'll let, I'll let Jasmine share what she. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, my goodness. What? Hold on. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. I hear you, girl. Yeah. Um, well. I guess being like needy, I guess. Like I wanna talk to you all the time. Um, oh, you do wanna do that. Yeah, like that's something I'm working on. Like giving them space. Cause like I always wanna talk to you, be around you. Um I don't know, spend time with you all the time. What so, sign like, are that's you? Something. Pardon me? What sign are you again? A Virgo. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. I can see that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, that's something that, like, I've been really, like, good at now. I'm not in no relationship. But I'm just saying, like, as being single and, like, loving yourself and all that, like, that was one of my things that was for me. Yeah. That I just need to give them space, have their own life, give them their own life, like, have their own fun. Be ha, let them be their own person. Yeah. So that was for me. Yeah. Damn, I'm the complete opposite of that, Jasmine. It's so funny because my sister is kind of like that. My older sister is. She was the more, you know, clingy, needy. Like that's her vibe. And I'm the complete opposite. I'm like, I will give you so much space. And I will, I'm not, my biggest downfall in relationships and stuff is being vulnerable and acting like I care and I need you. Cause I had, my mentality used to be, I'm gonna hurt you before you hurt me. Like it was just a wall of like, ooh, no, no, no. It was always, I kept them here. Yeah. So hard for me to be vulnerable and be like, sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I was like, it's the extreme. Like, um, the extreme of like space, you know, yeah. and I'm trying to find that balance of like, okay, being open, like you can be vulnerable and say you miss them or, you don't want to talk to them. Like, it's okay to want to like know what they're up to and missing them. Like, that's so hard for me to do. Cause I'm like, ew, I don't want to come off as that. I don't want to be needy. I don't want to be clingy. So I'm like, oh, I'm acting like, I don't care. We good. Yeah, that's my biggest biggest downfall. Like that communicating my feeling. I don't do that vulnerability, and I'm the most sensitive bitch. Like, and I love that stuff. Like, I love love, but I have like a wall. 
Yeah, because you don't want to look like like you're that's the weak right. person. Yes. Or, like you want to be weak. that. And that's and that's not that weak. Yeah, it it really isn't weak because you're you have so much love to give, but you don't know how much love. Yeah, and you're scared to, like, I'm scared to give it. Because it's like, ooh, what if you hurt me? Like, here I am being like, oh, I love you so much. And then you just fucking, but you out here breaking my damn heart. I can't have that. I can't have like, that. <laughs> what? That's why you got to get that full coverage. That's cute. Right, insurance. <laughs> like, I need to make sure to yeah. be covered. But, yeah, that's my biggest. Is the, like, the opposite of that. You know what's interesting, Diana? I feel like I am becoming very similar how you think right now mm. so back then because i've been in you know different relationships where i was broken i now feel at this point in my life i'm not very very open to people that i meet for example like if it's a somebody I see an interest or i see attractive you know we can talk this and that but I'm still going to keep my guard up because I feel like because of my past relationship, and it's sad to say this, but I have, I feel like the next person that's coming in my life has to try a little harder because from what I've experienced, all that Gucci, Gucci nice. And, you know, and like you said, Hello. I was broken. I, I can man up about it. It was, now I have to really watch out who this person gonna be. I'm be like, I put my, you know, my diet, uh, what what they call it, rock. Uh, right yeah, right and die. I was, trying to, I was gonna say rock. Oh, right and die. Yeah, right and die. Right. I need a girl to ride, ride, ride. I need a girl to. <laughs> Can I say that's what? I'm ready to get through with that. Shit. Right. Right. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, well, okay, go ahead. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Like I, I need. That's why I'm a little different now. Like I don't be too clinging like before. Like I'll message so and so whatever, but I like I won't be like every day. Hey, yeah. this and that. Nah, I'm just. Being, were you like that before? Yeah. So like I would be like very similar to Jasmine. Like I would be really like, "Hey girl, I miss you. What you're doing." I wish I was like that. I mean, yeah. my, sister today, my sister today, listen, she was like, man, like she was talking about Snapchat and she's like, man, if I get a man and he sees whatever, like that she had like a streak going with this one, one of her friends. She's like, to me, it's nothing. But if my man saw it, I'm like, well, how would he even see it? And she's like, what do you mean? Like if he just saw it and I'm like, oh, fuck, bitch. I don't even know. Like I didn't, I don't know how to be a girl like how to do that like get his phone look at it like how do you do that to me it's like oh everyone has their own like you have your own space i'm not gonna go through your phone you're not gonna go through my phone like it's very like i hate that because i want to be that type that's like give me your phone i want to see it or like come here like i want to be that i i feel like you're good diana at that point because look for me i'm just saying i don't want to be the person to be always checking your phone See if you're going behind. But I want to, I'm not always checking it, but I want to have a balance of, yeah, if I want to grab his phone, I can look. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want that like, kind yeah. of relationship too, where it is not clingy, but like, man, I'm missing you, or man, I want to be by you. Like, I like that too. Yeah. Not extreme where you're like a psycho, but like a little bit of that. Like, I feel like everybody wants that. Yeah, you definitely want like the trust. Like, yeah. oh, great, let me get your phone. Let me go find a nice clean place you can go to and you go through his phone. Right. Or like, yeah. or, like, I can talk to you about, like, man, I'm really hurt about this. Or, like, man, I really do want to see you. I miss you. I haven't seen you in a couple. Like, being vulnerable in that sense, I think, is so beautiful. Yeah. You know, there's so much beauty to that. Yeah. And, and I feel like when you do find that person, you, they will let you do that. Yes. That's so, what my sister was saying. She's like, if you <laughs> find that person, like, it just happens. Like, it just becomes that. Right. Where you don't have to try or do games or whatever, like, shit like no. that. Yeah. No, because I know in my heart that the right person won't give me all that stuff that I have to do, like, 
oh, I got to get your approval, your validation. Like, the right person will just, like, they will just let me love them and they will love me that easy. Like this. I don't got to do all that hard work. <laughs> I can be 100% me. Like, mm -hmm. just be myself. And then they accept it for it. Right. All the bad, too. Like, not just the good. Like, all those flaws and shit. Like, somebody out there is going to be like, yo, you know what? Yeah, she got this and that. But you know what? I, like, that's my writer. That's my person. Oh, that's so... That's good. Damn. <laughs> oh, I see that. We're getting deep. Oh, man. Let me just see this. Okay. All right. I think we're doing good, squad. Um, I'm actually going to wrap it up. But real quick, um, Jasmine, uh, where can people find your channel? Um, so you can find me at Jazz to be inspired. Um, I basically talk about like um, different experience of mine and like what to do. It's under like four minutes, so it's right to the point. I won't be blabbing about like la 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 la. I will get to like what you're looking for. So yeah, it's not just LGBTQ like coming out and stuff. It's more of like relationships, gut instinct getting out of the friend zone or like little things like that. So yeah, you can find me there. <laughs> this every Tuesday, right? Yes. Or once a week. Cause it, life has been like so busy and it's going to get even busier. So I'm going to keep trying for you guys for sure. I'll, I'll make sure I'll put the link under for this description for this video. And for you, Diana, she, oh my girl, we are, I'm very happy to have you back. Like, you don't understand. Like, my fans are going crazy about you. They, they keep telling me, when is Diana coming back? Where's she at? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know, I'm working on this. She's really hard to reach. I ain't lying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't. The horrible flexor. The communication. I'm working on it. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, man, she's hard. Like, I'd be like, I have to talk to her agent. Then I got to talk to a, a I got to go climb the ladder just to get to Diana. And then I get that voice spell. Boop, that's kidding, buddy. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. But I'm really glad you're here, girl. Uh, I'm, glad to be back. I love it. I'm happy I came with Jasmine here. I love yes. it. It's such a, I'm glad too. Like, cheers to both of you guys. Um, like, it's such a fun time. Right. All the day. night was fun, and it's just, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, David, and thank you, Diana, too. <laughs> of course. Uh, Diana, any last words you want to say? Uh, be yourself, everybody. Like, <laughs> own it. Walk in it with love and humility, right? But <laughs> that's it. Just love yourself. Be yourself, and, you know, you're not alone. People have gone through, you know, like, obviously your story, everyone's story is different, but like, there are people that have been through what you've been through. So yeah, just learn to love yourself and life is short. Just be you, love you, love others. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> All right, squad. Well, um, my fans, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll be back next week. Peace. Bye. Bye.